Hey everybody, Tiger Mike here. So we got this new episode of Mandalorian just came out and seeing how I've given you the background of the Mandalorian history, I'm just going to start off with the, the new episode that just came out and I'll do some older episodes and uh, as I'm doing newer episodes and we'll get all caught up that way. But you know, you don't want to lag behind what's current and what's fresh. So here we go for episode four, The Siege. All right, so first of all, a couple of quick notes uh, of points of interest on this episode. Uh, the return of Carl Withers and Gina Carano as Grief Karga and Cara Dune. Good to see them back. I'm sure we'll see them again, probably. So a couple interesting notes for this episode. First of all, we got Aqualish, who I don't know if you guys remember the cantina scene from A New Hope. <laughs> He doesn't like you. Sorry. I don't like you either. You best watch yourself. We want it been. I've got the death sentence in twelve systems. I'll be careful. You'll be dead! This little one's not worth the effort. Come let me get you something. He does not choose to live. Let's put it that way. And that's immediately uh, an in a funny reference from A New Hope or the original Star Wars movie. So just an interesting note, the protocol droid or the teacher droid, whatever you want to call it, is uh, teaching the children about hyperspace lanes. Who can name one of the five major trade routes in the galaxy? Anyone? How about the Corellian Run? The Hydean Way? Yes, the Hydean Way. That is correct. So that's just pretty interesting right there. Just, an, you know, a little tidbit. So next we have Mithril, who uh, is played by Horatio Sands, hilariously enough. Uh, if you didn't catch that the first time you saw him. Hey, look at that. He's back. He's unfrozen. And he's he's back at work for Grief Karga, who apparently he skipped out were on some accounting work uh, and, and finagled some, uh, did some embezzling, if you will. So here he is back again, and he'll actually be with us the rest of the episode uh, until Mandalorian leaves Navarro and is just one of my more favorite uh, side characters to come about. You know, he's just, uh, honestly, he, you can't even barely tell that he's Horatio Sands. You know, he does such a good job at just being this character. And, you know, he'd, when you realize, oh, it's Horatio Sands, it kind of makes sense. But simultaneously, you're not like, hey, that's Horatio Sands, you know what I mean? So another interesting thing that we have to keep an eye on is who was Mithril talking to when Grief, Mando, and Cara Dune walked into the room? It seems like he was about to say to somebody that the Mandalorian was back because he's saying... There's no registration on the ship, but... I'm pretty sure it belongs to So this is a moment that we have to keep an eye on because Mithril definitely isn't to be trusted. Uh, and then we have the spy, who is the mechanic there, um, who's definitely working for the Empire. But how did that person get the message out? So, you know, we just got some interesting... Mithril definitely needs to be kept an eye on. That's all I'm saying. So next thing we got to talk about is, I mean, obviously there's a lot of goodies in the Imperial base. You know, we got speeders, we got the troop transport here, um, you know, the TIE fighters up top. You know, and the, you see a lot of little goodies as they're walking through the base and stuff. Um, and that's really cool. But I'm not going to nitpick and go through and tell you everything about everything that's in there just because that would take forever. So, you know, just know that there's a lot of cool stuff, and I'm sure somebody out there will make a video saying, like, oh, this is that version of... You know, the high... So, anyway, the most important kind of notes, one of the two most important notes from this episode, in my opinion, is what they find in the Imperial base. And these are disfigured humanoids. You know, they look... Like, they used to be human, maybe. Um, 
it's possible that they were Mandalorian, and it, it could be that these particular subjects uh, were from the covert on Navarro that the Imperials ran in and, and just like killed a bunch of them. We see that the Smith is still at work when he goes back there, so presumably most of them were killed that didn't escape, but it's possible some of them were captured. Either way, they could just be regular stormtroopers who are like, yeah, I'll, I'll sign up for this program, and then boom, you know, doesn't go well for them. Um, but the important thing to note is what they're doing. So you have the hollow with the scientist. He's talking about the M count of the child, saying that they're not going to find another subject who, or another donor who has a high, anywhere near as high of an M count as the child does. Uh, and they're all, and he's also talking about the failure of the project and the lack of more blood from the, from the child. So basically what he's telling us here is that these guys are being injected with the child's blood to increase their midichlorian count. So the only reason to increase the midichlorian count would be to try and infuse these people with force abilities or force sensitivity. All right, so this calls back to two different works from the legends that are no longer considered canon, uh, or never really were considered canon anyway. Uh, but you have the Dark Forces video game, and then you have the Dark Empire comic series uh, by Dark Horse Comics. So you might be familiar with the Dark Empire comic series, at least in name, because a lot of people talked about it for The Rise of Skywalker with the clone Palpatine. But essentially, in Dark Empire, a clone Palpatine is created and controls the Empire again. And so to try and take back over the galaxy, he launches a military campaign. One of the things that he does is he creates Dark Troopers, which are elite stormtroopers that have been infused with force powers. How exactly he goes about doing this, I'm not 100% sure, but basically now you have these elite troopers with force powers. They're trained in dark force powers, so they at least have basic force abilities that they and so that makes them just super badass warriors going through to fight in this new military campaign for a resurgent empire. In the Dark Forces series, you have something a little different, but that's called on to the next scene with Moff Gideon getting informed that they're tracking the Mandalorian now. So he's standing in front of the all these, you know, what what we aren't quite sure what they are. Uh, they could be droids, they could be exosuits, or they could be some sort of combination. So the Dark Forces program was pretty much exactly that wherein Kyle Katarn, the player character, is tasked by Mon Mothma to destroy the Dark Trooper program, which was, there were three phases of the Dark Trooper program, which was a basic skeleton, um, and then there was a more advanced, you know, skeleton with more armor on it, and more of an arsenal, and phase three was an exosuit that would be worn by stormtroopers, which would have basically, you know, incredibly powerful armor, not only to protect them, but also there'd be a repeater cannon on it, like the one that we see at the end of The Mandalorian, that would just be shoulder mounted, and they would also have missiles. And it's possible that these could be made of Beskar. So we're not 100% sure. We have these technicians that are working on these things, and they kind of look like Cylons, if you look at them, from Battlestar Galactica, the original Cylons more. Um, but uh, these could be suits. These could be container pods. These could be, you know, a couple of different things. But we basically now have two solid references to a Dark Trooper program. So either it's they're trying to infuse Dark Force powers into, you know, elite stormtroopers so that they can make super soldiers or they're developing these as exosuits for the phase three dark trooper program for people to wear they could also just be droids or they could even just be stasis pods that are just holding all of these subjects for when they have more material uh from the child so we have a lot of different possibilities here but they're all pretty exciting and a couple of things that they are 
in a way foreshadowing or are foreshadowing in the universe is all of the experiments that Palpatine is doing on Exegel, on Exegel, 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 whatever it is. So, you know, when Kylo Ren walks through the area and when we see the Snoke clone test tube things and all those guys. And so this could be the beginning of those and it could have nothing to do really with creating super soldiers but the possibilities are there and they're all super interesting so now mandalorian is going to find ahsoka tano i think they're going to be ambushed by some imperial troops who are going to try and take the child they may even take the child it's a good chance that they're going to get their hands on the child and then Ahsoka, Mandalorian, and they're going to go find Bo-Katan, who's going to join up with them so that she can get the Darksaber, and that he can get the child, and that Ahsoka can be awesome and helpful because that's just how she is, and, you know, because she wants to get the Empire down, I'm sure, just as much as anybody else. So, we'll see what happens, but there's some real interesting possibilities going on here, gang. So stay tuned, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of new videos and all that fun stuff. So we'll see you next time, gang. Tiger Mike, signing out. This is the way. Mm -hmm.